we have to understand what the scripture is speaking of in terms of fruit. Now, plainly in the context of the text, we are the branches. Christians are the branches. Jesus being the vine. We have to abide in him. If we are abiding in him, it is inevitable we will bear fruit, unless we are a dead branch. A dead branch is an unrepentant backslider. However, even fruitful branches require pruning. The old nature, the things that are wrong in each of our lives, the Lord cuts away. Now, fruit. The first is the fruit of the Spirit, the divine nature manifested in Christ that are listed for us in Galatians chapter 5. We have a teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. The second, the fruit of righteousness, a moral change in our life when we, when we become believers. Third, the fruit of leading souls to Jesus, of leading others to Christ. It is the normal course of events for someone abiding in Jesus to bear all three kinds of fruit. The fruit of the Spirit should become evident in our lives. People should be drawn to Jesus through us. Secondly, we should be leading people to Christ, or at least witnessing and attempting to do so. Not that we're all evangelists, but we're all witnesses. We can all witness one-on-one. -on -one. Thirdly, the fruit of righteousness, a fundamental moral change in our lives. Believers may fall into sin, but they do not practice it. They do not subscribe to the, 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 the pornography or the, the pornographic websites, whatever it is. Uh, they, they do not continue to live immorally and practice adultery or fornication. They do not continue to get drunk. They do not uh, or, uh, become habitual substance abusers. They don't live that way anymore. There's a fruit of righteousness, a moral change in their life. Now, can believers still fall into these sins and problems? Yes. That's why we require pruning. <laughs> but that doesn't make the branch dead. However, if somebody continues to sow to the flesh, they're not abiding in Christ. He is the source of life. If someone cuts themselves off from Christ, they cannot have his life eternal in them. A related analogy, however, is Romans 11, talking not about a vine and branches, but about an olive tree. It's a different category of, of typology, nonetheless, the principle applies. The natural branches can be grafted in again. The total Jewish rejection of Christ, almost total, nearly total, is reversible. And it's always been reversible for individual Jews who believe, but at the end of the age, many Jews will believe they'll be grafted in again. Because a branch is dead, because somebody has backslid to the point they're no longer abiding in Christ, that does not say that they cannot repent, that the Lord does not desire their repentance, and that they cannot be grafted in again. They can be grafted in again. We see this by illustration in Romans 11. An unrepentant backslider who's not abiding in Christ does not have the assurance of salvation. But remember, the good shepherd leaves the 99 for the one. They can be grafted in again if they repent. But there must be repentance. Without holiness, no man shall see God. This is the meaning. I hope this clarifies the issue somewhat. It is a very involved question concerning in what way are we eternally secure in Christ and in what way is that eternal security conditional? Well, we are eternally secure in Christ, but it is conditional. Thank you so much. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube, 
deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, a questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.